good evening everyone and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today we're going to be going out west to Falcon, Colorado, where we find young 13-year-old Colby Sokol. Colby, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing great, man. I'm talking to you and it's a good day here in Florida. So what's it like out in Colorado? It's actually, it's getting pretty warm. I think yesterday we had a little bit of rain, but overall it's been getting pretty warm out here. All right. So as far as race face drivers, I think that you and your younger brother Justice was some of the first to actually get back to racing. And so uh, between the last few weeks and the end of last year, what's been going on over the winter? Well, over the winter, we've been, I've been trying to do a lot of iRacing, getting to know a bunch of different race cars on there and try a bunch of different race cars, kind of more towards the pavement stuff because that's something uh, to get used to on there. I like, I like trying to run the different racetracks and different cars like that. But even outside in the garage, we've been just trying to get some updates and stuff like that on the race cars, get some different axles and try some different things from this year. All right, so you've been doing a lot of things virtually, actually. Not only have you been doing a lot of iRacing and sharpening up your skills there, but you've also been attending virtual school. What's that been like? Virtual school, it's it's different. I, I like the workload better just because on in real school, you'd have to go there and you have a bunch of paper, papers and essays and stuff like that. But on virtual school, I think they kind of knew that there'd be a lot of distractions and stuff like that. So that's kind of why they put the workload down. But the thing I don't like is not being able to see my friends. Yeah. So let me ask you something. Do you have a favorite online class that you like the most? My favorite online class would be math. I think it's just, I mean, my teacher in math was great when I went to school. And even here we had a couple of tests, but he just taught everything really well. And he was really into depth about what everything needed to be done compared to some of my other teachers not really doing that. Yeah. So then which class has been the most challenging for you to be able to take virtually? I would say either reading or writing. I mean, there was a lot of work in there. We had to read a book and answer a bunch of questions on it throughout the course of uh, the last quarter we had. And I felt like kind of the way the teachers taught it was a little bit, a little bit weird to me, but uh, maybe that's just what they just felt was best. Right. Okay. So, Let's now go into the virtual racing world and let's talk about what's been going on with you in the simulator and get into some details. I know that you competed in the uh, junior late model series and you've been racing some late models. I know that you've been racing some sprint cars. So kind of bring us up to speed on your virtual world. Well, the virtual racing and stuff like that uh, has been really good. Uh, we actually got some updates. As you can see, we got a new steering wheel and some new pedals and stuff like that that really help out really help out a lot. And as you said, uh, I was in the Junior Late Model Esports League. That was really fun. I had a lot of fun learning how to drive the late models and just learning how to drive them differently with one specific setup for uh, each of the different racetracks. And I had a lot of fun doing that. But even on some of the dirt stuff, I've been trying to run like some midgets and stuff like that just to get to know and learn them because it can also help me in real life too. Well, I think you had a, a, a spotter and a special person that kind of helped you uh, for a couple of days and Logan Seavey, uh, how exciting was that? Uh, that's really excited, exciting because Logan Seavey, like my first race there, I, I really struggled a lot and he was there, he kind of helped me. So then after the race, after that, he kind of uh, helped me learn qualifying stuff like that to start up there towards the front and even just like heat racing stuff. And it overall helped me and I got a lot better from it. Yeah, I mean, it, when it comes to to dirt racing in a midget and a sprint car, he's one of the best in the country, isn't he? Yeah, he is. All right, so um, a question I've been asking everybody that's been doing virtual racing, how do you see what you're learning on the simulator and the skill sets that you're learning there to be able to carry that over into the real car? Well, on the dirt stuff, I tend to have a low patience sometimes. I'll make some decisions that aren't very smart that I could I could wait a little bit longer for. So that's helpful on dirt because, you know, on irising, like Justice said and his brand, one click, no money. Uh, if you make a mistake, you can just reset like that. But in real life, if you make that big a mistake, then you can't necessarily just reset it. So it's good to practice that, how to calm my patience a little bit. But even on like the 305s in iRacing, 
they're kind of like a, I guess you could say almost a restricted car in 600 racing because you have to be super smooth with them. You have to be very up on the gas pedal, and not getting off the gas very much. So it's good to learn that too. Well, we may have to have patience etched inside your your helmet shield when it goes down so they would keep that word always in front of you. Or right up on the dash too. On the dash. I'll have a sticker made and I'll send it to you. You can stick it on the dash. So looking back at 2019, or we'll talk about that for just a couple of minutes. What was your highlight for 2019? My highlight for 2019, I would say, is the 2019 Tulsa Shootout. It was my first ever dirt race, my first ever time at the shootout, my first ever time running a 600 micro sprint and a junior sprint. And I went out there and I learned a lot. And in the junior sprint, I went out there and actually almost won a golden driller for my first ever dirt race at the Tulsa shootout, which for most people to say that's that's pretty dang good. No, I think that's more than pretty dang good. I think that was awesome. I was like hanging off my seat. Uh, I thought you had it. But you know what you learn. So you've been back for your second trip uh, to the Tulsa shootout. And how much when you learn what you did the first year, how much of that actually carried over? Was it just uh, a lot about kind of not being nervous, knowing that you've been there before? So how did that work out? Well, some of it, like you said, it was not being nervous, but overall, it's just the competition there. Uh, the competition is so tough there because you got people from all over the country there. You got the big D1 guys and the big uh, Stollard guys going there and racing. And overall, the, like I said, the competition is so tough. And there's so many races and so many cars that if your heat races aren't very good, like say you get taken out in a heat race, it's going to really suck for you because you're going to have to go to like an F main. You're going to have to go through an alphabet soup there, which those you have to get up really early and race throughout, throughout the whole day. So that really sucks. But the, I think also, like you said, just uh, knowing that I've raced there before, because when I first went out there, my 600, just going out for practice, I was sitting in my car and I was like, and I was really nervous. But then when I went out there uh, the second time, the second time at the shootout, I was very calm and kind of knew what I was trying to do out there. Right. So you're, you're competing this year in the 600, but you're running wing and non-wing. So the big question is, which one do you like the best? I would I would choose both just because uh, in the wing car you can you can be it more up on the throttle sometimes and you can even sometimes go faster because you got the wing there to hold you down to the ground. But on the non-wing car, I like it because you have to drive it a lot differently and you have to drive it a lot harder compared to the wing car. So if I had to choose one, I would choose non-wing. So let me ask you something, Colby. What is your long-term goal in racing? My long-term goal in racing is to eventually get to NASCAR and maybe do what like kind of Christopher Bell does. To get up into NASCAR and just start working my way up through the levels and kind of go through like the TRD path and maybe end up racing for Joe Gibbs one day. And even uh, like on the dirt side, like Christopher Bell does, he runs sprint cars and midgets and stuff like that for different people. So I think if I can get up there one day and kind of do what him and Kyle Larson even did sometimes. I uh, think that'd be my end goal. So you see a big advantage of learning that skill set, driving those dirt cars and that feel, that uh, seat of the pants feel that you learn in those cars will really be able to transfer over and hopefully you'll be able to lean on that in your NASCAR career. I definitely think so. All right, I, I agree with you actually. So what does the 2020 season look like? I know that you've got a lot of racing already going on. You've got some big events coming up. Uh, what are some of the things that you're most excited to and what track do you look forward to visiting maybe in 2020 where, that you haven't been to yet? Uh, in 2020, it, we're planning on uh, trying to go to a lot of races, a lot of traveling, a lot of going to different racetracks and trying to race there and overall just having a lot of fun. And the track that I'm most excited to hit in 2020, I wouldn't necess necessarily say track, but tracks because I'm really excited for Speed Weeks coming up here because last year I did Speed Weeks once and I had a lot of fun. But this time, because I've, I've learned a lot more, I've gotten a lot faster and I'm running faster classes and more classes, it's going to be really fun just because Speed Weeks is five straight days of racing at five different racetracks in a row. So I'm really excited for that. 
Yeah, I was thinking uh, the other day when we were doing race face driver updates for you and your brother Justice, I may have to start your guys' own show because it's the time you run, you know, wing, non-wing, restricted, non-restricted for both of you and you know, the heat races and the B mains and the C mains. I mean, you guys make your own whole show. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of races when you go to those. A lot of racing. So let's talk about something that you're doing off track, which really, I think, sets you apart from a lot of that. And that is that you've got your own podcast. Yeah, the podcast is great. Uh, I really like doing it with Justice. We'll just go downstairs. We'll spend a couple hours just practicing and getting the video right before we go out there and post it. But I think probably our our best guest, although we've only had like two guests, is going is Racer. Because when Racer's on the podcast, he'll be sitting there. And then the last time he was on there, I look down. He's right there. And then we start talking. And all of a sudden, I hear a thump. I'm like, what the heck? And I look down, and Racer fell off the little step stool we put up there for him. But he's just a great podcast member with us. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what, the way to get a lot of people to follow you is to bring your dog on set. I can relate to that a lot. So um, in all of this busy things that you've got going on, you're working on the car, racing the car all over the country, doing your own podcast. What does Colby do when you're not focused in on racing stuff? Well, I like to sometimes go downstairs and I race, just do a couple fun races. Uh, I like to play on my Xbox. I definitely like to be in my phone. And sometimes when I have the chance, I like to go and play with my friends. All right. Well, do you want to give a shout out to any of your sponsors? I would definitely like to give a shout out to some of my sponsors. I like to thank Rainbow Sprinkler, Peak View Plumbing, Stollard, EMI, Speedway, Yoshimura, Engler, Advanced Racing Suspensions, my Nana and Papa, my Grandma and Papa Lee, my Mom, my Dad, Justice, Hayden, and Big A. Well, Kobe, I want you. I want to thank you for being with us tonight. If you're out there and you're a sponsor looking to hook up with a top young driver, not only behind the wheel but off the track, Kobe Sokol is definitely your pick. So again, Kobe, thanks for being with us. For any of you that have missed any of our episodes, you can always get caught up on any of your favorite spotlights that you might have missed with your race face drivers by attending raceface.tv on demand. Check Colby out at colbysocalracing.com. Look up in the right hand corner. You can get to all of his social media platforms. Make sure that you follow him. And while you're either in his fan zone or on his Facebook page, make sure to subscribe to Colby's mm -hmm. newsletter. It's a monthly digital newsletter that goes out. Kind of keeps you up to speed with everything that's going on. So, Colby, good luck for the rest of the season. We look forward to having you back uh, a little bit later. My name is Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching Raceface Spotlight.